let's go back to my whiteboard. Boom. Boom, we back at it. Okay, so first thing, controlling your time using that calendar app, okay? If you're not using a calendar app, it's very difficult for you to be able to see what you're doing with your time. And I did this exercise, exercise with one of my clients and we sat down and I said, okay, so what are the three most important things in your life right now? Person said, you know, my relationship with God, my family, my career, you know, basic things that a lot of us have the same type of things going on. And I said, okay, now let's look in your calendar. Can you tell me where you have scheduled events for each one of these things in your life? Like, do you have a scheduled time to pray every single day? Not randomly, although you should randomly be praying if you're taking your relationship with God serious, but God, God don't want your random prayers all the time. Sometimes he wants you to come with some structure, with some order, right? Would you be able to, to sit down in an in a, a uninterrupted environment to be able to get the results that you want? So you want to make sure that you have allocated time for the major areas in your life, okay? All right, and then the second thing, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm giving you things that you have control over because when you take the control back in your life, you now have the authority to build self-confidence, all right? And the next thing is who you spend your time with. You can control who you're spending your time with. OK, if you're hanging around people that you have to constantly pull up to your level or you're constantly sharing your wins from the past with, meaning you sitting there telling them about everything that you accomplished in high school, everything that you accomplished when you was in college and you guys are living in the glory days, you still talking about when you was the best player on the team in high school. Right. It's time for you now to make new memories. Start advancing your career and you all this only happens when you put yourself around other people that are leveling up i didn't believe this until i got into an environment in a community where everybody else was leveling up as well you know we just had our men's call on saturday and on saturday we had 10 men in a community where we were all sharing our wins we were sharing our losses and we were sharing strategies to close the gap to get to where we want to go in life. Everybody was a, either a father, a husband, a business owner, an entrepreneur, or a professional. Everybody on the call. Now, when you spend your time with those type of people, they're going to help you to build more skill sets. It's going to help you to sharpen your game. And I love to deal with former athletes and coaches, right? And if you're a former athlete, you understand that competition drives your performance. Meaning when you see a player that you wanna compete with or you wanna show out with, you're gonna raise your game. You're going to put a couple extra shots up. You're gonna go run a couple extra miles. When the, 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 the competition rises, your game rises. And it's the same thing in our personal life. If you're hanging around four other losers, you will subconsciously become the fifth loser. If you're hanging around four winners, pushing themselves, trying new things. I didn't say that was perfect. I'm not telling you to try to go out here and try to find a clique of people that are perfect because nobody's perfect, right? But what I'm telling you to do is put yourself around like-minded individuals. If you're trying to build a business or if you're trying to expand your career, you want to hang out with those type of people because it's going to make it easier on you, right? And we don't always have to try to level up, meaning find somebody that's all the way up here and you're trying to connect with them or you're trying to build with them. You know, one thing I actually learned from uh, one of my, my uh, writing coaches, Jasmine Womack, Jasmine told us in a workshop, she said, listen, a lot of people think about networking and they start thinking about people way at the top that they want to connect with. But something that people overlook is the lateral connections that you have, meaning somebody directly across from you may be able to help you with that idea that you have. Somebody that's in your inner circle may be able to add some value in different areas in your life. So it's time to evaluate those relationships that you have. And I want you to write down 
the five closest people to you in your life. If you don't have five, write down three. If you don't have three, write down two, right? Then I want you to ask yourself, are these people adding value into your life or are they sucking the energy out of you, right? And I got a name for those type of people. They're called energy vampires. If you're constantly showing up and you have to give your energy to somebody else to motivate them, to inspire them, and next thing you know, you don't have no energy for your family, for the goals that you have in your life, for those main things that are on your calendar, that's a problem. That's when you need to start making some shifts. And, and this is what we're talking about, the, the mindset shifts that we got to make in order to go from a zero to a hero, right? Because I, I, I know you crush your life. I know you you killing your job, right? But there may be one area in your life where you really trying to level up and this is going to be able to help you with that. All right, so the first thing that we went over was controlling your time. The second thing is being able to identify who you're spending your time with and asking yourself, are these people adding value or are they sucking value and draining your energy and taking all of those things away from you, okay? And then the, the next thing, the next shift that I want you to think about is your attitude, all right? Attitude slash effort, okay? Now, these two things basically mean what are you doing when adversity hits? And by adversity, all I mean is a problem comes in your life. So let's say this problem comes in your life, right? And, and you don't know how to solve it. You don't know what to do. Now, some people will start to say negative things, right? Some people will start to think negative thoughts. But when your mind goes straight into negative things and negative thoughts, your outcome usually follows that mindset. It usually follows those thoughts. Even in the Bible, it tells us to think on positive things, think on good things, think on the best that can happen. That's what your mind should be focused on, right? And, and that's why it's important for you to have a morning mastery thinking routine, which I teach all of my personal clients. And we're going to walk through that on a workshop that we have starting March 7th. If you're interested in that workshop, go ahead and send me a message and I'll go ahead and put you on that, that waiting list and you get a freebie for signing up early, okay? But your attitude and your effort. If you're, if you're sitting here thinking, what is attitude? Well, your attitude is how you're responding when things don't go your way. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I, I know I'm, I'm all up in somebody's living room right now. When things are not going your way, how do you respond? Okay, if you're responding with a negative outlook, if you're responding and you're starting to lash out at other people, you're starting to blame others for the things that have happened in your life, you're starting to blame people like the government, right? You're starting to blame COVID for all this stuff going wrong in your life, right? That's not having a positive attitude. And your attitude is actually what's driving you to get those results that you want. Don't get it twisted. I have bad days. I definitely have bad days, but what I do is I don't focus on the bad days, I actually shift my focusing to the positive things, okay? And one of the things that I love to do is I love to keep a gratitude journal, okay? My gratitude journal instantly helps me to identify the small wins that I have in my life, the highlights that actually help me to crush life. And now I'm now focused and my perspective has changed, right? I am no longer being focused on the things that I don't have. I'm actually being focused on the solutions that I can provide, right? I didn't look at today and say, oh man, I got to get on and I got to go live. I looked at today, today and said, I have three shifts in a mindset that will help you to get better results in your life and increase your productivity. These are things that I need to share. Right. But if I looked at this with a negative attitude and a negative outlook, I would start putting limits on myself. And that's what you're doing when you have a negative attitude and you're not giving it all you have, which is your effort, which is showing up when you don't want to show up. Woo! Listen, last week, I upped my workouts to twice a day. I was doing once a day and I felt fine doing that. And I, I felt like I was getting after it. But then I looked at my little, my little stomach pudge and, 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 my, and my pudge told me, he said, hey, hey, DP, you got more in you. You got more in you. Why don't you go get one more cardio workout in? 
And since I'm actually coaching some other trainers, I told them, hey, I need you to send me a workout. So one of my clients sent me a cardio workout and I'm sitting there doing the workout and I'm like, oh, I can do two workouts a day and I'm not exhausted. I, I'm, I'm not crazy, right? But did I feel like doing it? No, no, I did not feel like doing it. Do I feel like waking up, waking up at 5 a.m. and doing a mastery thinking routine? No, I don't feel like doing it. But guess what? Those skills that I've been able to develop as a young athlete, a young coach, a young entrepreneur, those skills that I've been able to develop have helped me to go from a student manager to a division one coach, a business owner, a husband. I now have three degrees. <laughs> but listen, and I didn't even like school. I didn't even like school, y'all. And one thing that I realized was all of the skill sets that I was able to develop from sports have carried me into success. They have motivated me and molded me into the person that I'm, I'm, I am today. So I'm used to doing things I don't feel like doing because I never felt like going to conditioning. <laughs> Listen, I never felt like waking up at 5.30 in the morning, going outside the cold and running and trying to get in shape. And I wasn't even playing, y'all. I was the student manager. Would you be doing that if you was the manager? Probably not. But you also didn't work your way to be a division one coach and go to two national championships, right? And that's why. That's why, because I was willing to do the things that nobody else was willing to do. Guys, these are the three mindset shifts that I want to share with you. Being able to control the controllables. The first thing you can control is your time. The second thing that you can control is who you spend the time with. And the third thing that you can control is your your attitude slash effort, right? And there's plenty more where that came from, but I, I definitely wanted to just share this with you. If this has been valuable, go ahead and drop in the comments. Go ahead and, and, and um, send me a message, DM me. If you watch it right now, I'm inviting you to a workshop that we're having uh, March 7th. Let me get the dates right. I don't want to give the wrong dates out. March 7th through the 9th, uh, a three-day workshop helping you to build this millionaire's mindset. I'm talking about taking your mindset from, from a zero to a hero, being able to be more productive with less stress, right? Being able to get the results that you want out of the skill sets that you already have, right? I'm not talking about going out and learning something off of YouTube. I'm talking about pulling out the gifts that you already have inside of you, okay? Because you are, are your number one asset. There, there's no, the outside of you is external forces. But I, I'm, I'm showing you how to build your inner person. The inner person makes the change, y'all. The inner person. Let me tell you something. I started making more money. It didn't change me, right? <laughs> I, I got more degrees. It didn't change me, right? But when I took the time and I started to work on myself, to work on my mindset, to work on my health set, to work on my relationships, to, to work on my, managing the money that I already had, my life went from zero to 100 real quick, right? So I'm gonna share all of these, these tools, these skills that you already have as a former athlete, as a coach, as a trainer, right? All of these things that you already have inside of you, we are gonna pull these out in that three-day workshop, y'all. Go ahead, shoot me a DM, send me a message if this has helped you. If you, if you wanna go ahead and get registered for the workshop, let's go ahead and get you on the calendar, okay? But remember guys, let me give you a little, a little, a little boost before we get off, listen. Listen, a lot of people want the results. A lot of people are not determined to put the work in though, okay? So I want you to go through this week and I don't want you to run away from the work. I want you to embrace the struggle. I want you to embrace the grind. I want you to look for problems so you become the solution. And when you become the solution, you're now increasing your personal value. As you increase your personal value, your life goes up right? And I want you to go through the roof this week. I want you to stop being average and I want you to go be a high performer. But in the midst of that, remember, nothing changes until you change. I'm going to say that again because you might have missed it. Nothing changes until you change. So make the change today. And as always, trust the grind. Let's get it.